Formula 1 returns to the Temple of Speed for round 13 of the 2018 season, the Italian Grand Prix here on the Monza circuit and with five teams expected to be in contention for the race win, Williams is straight out in FP1 and with immediately lighting up the timing screens even on the medium tyres and eventually Josh Chera and Robbie Kubica would end up setting the fastest times and being top two in all three of the practice sessions but nipping at the heels with a Toyota pair of Camille Kobayashi and Lewis Hamilton with many expecting that the Toyota has the outright trailer speed advantage just lacking a little bit in downforce Toyota are also favourites to take the victory come race day on Sunday Mercedes were looking to right the wrongs of the previous race and were looking strong early on in practice Alonso looking to uh, make right his underwhelming 7th place finish back at the last race at Spa just saw him beat by most of his championship rivals and lose crucial ground in the championship fight Ferrari come to this race with their final upgrade package of the season just to try and salvage something from the 2018 campaign and maybe come away with at least a podium finish, maybe even the win for the Defosi home crowd to give them something to cheer about. Red Bull come to this race running the same low drag upgrade that they ran back at Spa, although they do look to be even more of a strong speed disadvantage as the practice times would show, and Max Verstappen and Daniel Kvyat could both be in for a long race on Sunday. And finally, Antonio Giovinazzi makes his first race of the season now with the Alfa Romeo Sauber team and he will run for the remainder of the season up until the Brazilian Grand Prix and Massachusetts will return for the final race of the season. Max Stappen wouldn't even bother setting a time in Q1 and the Red Bull just chose to give him a new power unit since it wouldn't have started very high up anyway and he's joined on the back row by Charles Leclerc in the Sauber Alfa Romeo. The misfortune of others would get the McLarens off of the back row with Carl Majora still yet to out-qualify teammate Harry Anto, lining up in 18th with Harry Anto 17th. Carlos Sainz starts with 16th place in the Torosum and getting knocked out slowest in Q2 is Daniel Kvyat in the Red Bull Cosworth. Yeah, Gazi lines up a somewhat impressive 14th in the Torosum Honda, with Lance Stroll starting from 13th in the Haas. Tony Giovinazzi starts from 12th place in the Sauber Alfa Romeo in his first race of the season, with Mick Schumacher just missing out on the top 10 starting from P11. It'll be an all yellow row 5 with jean luc Verne getting his first top 10 start with his new Renault team and Hulkenberg his teammate completes the 5th row. Adrian Stuttel starts from P8 as a second of the Ferraris with Camille Kobayashi starting from 7th in the second of the Toyotas. Their two teammates will complete row 3 of the grid it has six championships between them, with Lewis Hamilton starting from P6 and five-time champion Sebastian Vettel starting from P5. It being all Sivararo row two, with Pascal Verla and Fernando Alonso separated by only a tenth of a second. Both of them will look to move forward in the race. That's left the front row to be sided as he was in Spa by the two Williams, with Robbie Kubica in second place and Josh Chiro taking honours with pole position. Hey guys, Taro here. Welcome back to the Union career, this time round 13 for the Italian Grand Prix on the Monza Circuit track which really suits our BMW Williams car then again really all of the top 5 teams are pretty nippy in the straight line as well. Fernando Alonso starting from P3, he's definitely going to want to make amends for last race and even being beat by the Ferrari of Adrian Suttil and Vettel's teammates either Suttil or Verne have seemed to be struggled in you know, Vettel's struggling himself really in that Ferrari as well. So talking of the Ferrari, what can they do now? Can they even get a podium, maybe even the win? That's what they're gunning for. They've put all their efforts now into this race, so they're going to do something at least to uh, please the Defoe because they've not really had all too much to cheer about so far this season. Well, what about Gio? What can he do? He's starting much higher up in the uh, Sauber car than we did last season, starting from inside the points places. I'm pretty sure he's going to want to stay there at the end of the race and take his first points of the season ahead of the uh, BMW Junior their driver there of Lance Stroll. And looking back into us now, starting from from pole position now in the Williams, and we've been in the Williams team now since 2015, since this Grand Prix as well in 2015. And back when we made our debut, also well, we've got a lot of good memories, we've got a lot of good form on this track as well. So, but I want to carry that over to this race as well. Now coming to the five red lights for the start of the Italian Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go. I'm pretty sure hole that was actually the car bit wheels being there from pretty much everyone on the left side of the grid. They've got Fernando's and Archie going to stop side. has got a blinder start there on the inside line. We've just dropped back now. Now both the Mercedes now goes to one of the toys against Sabotage now to turn one. And it's Robbie Kubica, our teammate now, that leads the Grand Prix. And he's quite convincing actually. Already pulling away a little bit of a gap now. 
to the Mercedes of Fernando Alonso, I want to say, is there in second place currently, but he's already put away, even though Alonso has a slipstream. Then you've got Pascal Verlain there in third place, being challenged out heavily by one of the Toyotas, they're going to try to get in the outside, and now Verlain defends. Kylian Solano coming into Chicago, going to have the inside line, actually, turns to the outside, and then the Toyota barges way past a brilliant move from the Toyota there of Lewis Hamilton, I think that is. Now we're looking now at the Merc now of Pascal Verlain into the Lesmos. But we just can't make it there through the first Lesmo. You have to defend there from both the Ferraris, you're looking quite feisty there, right behind. And um, Pascal Verlaine, we know this Mercedes is pretty good in terms of trailing speed with that AMG engine, but although we're right behind as well, we're even faster in trailing speed with our BMW engine. Now we're getting in the switch now on the back of Pascal Verlaine coming into his car. You can for me, we have a look at the other inside, just trying to try and scare Verlaine out of the way, really. Now coming through his car, really good run through here, trying to set up now into room, possibly even into Parabolica. Now we're beginning now, in the switching out on the back. Off Pascal Verlaine, we've got Camille Kirby actually behind us, so he's made up one place as well from the start. We're coming up now into Parabolic, we're not close enough to make a move up the inside line. We need a good run through here as well, this car. It doesn't really work well in the dead here, we're getting some good run here through the high speed coins. The high speed coins have always been what this BMW Williams would like, and our teammate Kubis to pull up the first lap of the race, but that's not really a surprise since he's actually leading the Grand Prix still. Um, and getting in the station now on the back of Pascal Verlaine, because Verlaine's in the station as well on the back of the station. We've got some good overspeed here, and Verlaine gets ready to the inside line. We're trying to go around the outside now of Pascal Verlaine, but he just blasted off the T-side ledge. A bit of a lock-up though, for Verlaine is going to cut off his exit now through turn 1 and then through turn 2 as well. He looks like he's just done just enough to defend, of course, when Verlaine locked up. He'd have run out the corner wide as well, and we've now got a very feisty community Kirby Ashley now all behind us as well. Getting in the station now, we're going to have to get facing now around curve of grind as well. Kirby Ashley's all over the back of the actually moves now to the inside line. We're trying to outbreak now the Japanese driver, which we do just about managed to outbreak him now into the second of the chicanes. We've got the lead for there, Sam Vettel running behind as well. Vettel, I imagine he's not made the progress from where he's actually. He's gone backwards from the start. He started in P5, I think he was, and he's down, down in behind us, so he's down in seventh place, I think so. Not to start the five time champ, but I wanted, but now can we try to make a move once again down, down this train now on Pascal Vellon once again? Of course, no DRS is aware of that now. If you're on that side, we've just got so much good speed in this BMW Williams now. Coming now into a scar, you get purple through the second sector, so but just showing there at good speed, going faster than everyone else in front of us. Although, if you look at the menu map, the gap in front there, Lewis Hamilton to uh, Alonso and Kibisa is already pretty sizable. There we are now gaining on the back. Off Pascal Verlaine now going into a parabolic once again, just to have a faint look there to the inside, just put Verlaine off of it though, if we do that too much, that's what he's going to know then. I oh, want to make a move there through Balaka, we get a brilliant run though, through Parabolica, don't know what Verlaine's doing, just napping on the racing line. I'm going to start by side now with Pascal Verlaine now, we drag with now down into turn one, we've already passed him, we've way before turn one now, Verlaine's now in our station. There you go, we have the station now off the back of the train once again, now Verlaine's actually going to try and go back now to the outside line, we have to go defensive to the inside line, Verlaine's going to go for a massive dive bomb around the outside line, we just managed to force the German out. And you pinch him to the apex there, he's going to cut Price's egg now through turn two. And that's going to leave him vulnerable to what honestly is the fastest car here in terms of outright straight line speed. The Toyota's behind as well. Now, Camille Kirby actually got a point to prove now. He's not at the best of season so far. This has been outshone by Hamilton. And now, Valak is defensive to the inside line. Kirby going to try and hold him around the outside line. And then turn to the inside, trying to do a copycat move to his teammate. Does he make it stick? Great move from Kirby actually learning from his teammate. Imagine they've been on the radio to uh, Kamui see that Hamilton made that kind of move, so it is possible. But nice move there from Kamui. Now, looking at a replay here at the start from uh, the board now with Daniel Kirby who had an absolute shocker as well. Down in 15th place, he didn't get blocked by anyone or anything. He did, this is just how slow the Red Bull was in quality. But now then into turn one, actually makes contact there with the Torosso, and makes even more contact as well. He's forced away to the inside line, and all cars are showing up behind as well. I think he may have got hit from behind. I, I doubt Kvyat would have just ploughed it there into turn one, so I'm pretty sure he had contact with someone behind. But he's got about half a front wing now, so surely he's going to have to pit for repairs. And then looking on now with Charles Leclerc, so was Leclerc the driver that possibly hit into a... Down a clear, either way, he's going now side by side with both of the McLaren's. He's going to sandwich both of them now through the inside line. That's going now into turn one. Actually, no, Kvyat actually doesn't hit anyone. He just ploughs into turn one, and then the Leclerc ploughs into a pile of cars. Well, honestly, this, the pile of cars in front of the Leclerc just completely stopped like that. And the other McLaren just goes round the outside line. So Leclerc also has half a front wing, so surely he's going to have to pit now for a new one as well. And, um, on what is Alfa Romeo's home turf as well, which is really what the team is now, although they'll still be under a Swiss, under a Swiss flag for the rest of the season. And indeed, on the end of the first lap, they did both have to come into the pits now, so... Dallas Kavir, it's not been a good weekend, really, for the Red Bull. It's not been a good last few races for him either. I mean, he won in Germany, but then he had a puncture in Hungary, which cost him a load of time as well, so... Yeah, now he's going to be way out of the point here as well. He might actually get by that, actually. The Taros is about stacking seriously. Both of them have strong wing damage, okay? That's that's any chance of points for the, for the Taros gone. I mean, honestly, they weren't going to get points anyway. Let's be real. They, they needed an absolute miracle as, for, of something to happen. But now both of them, they might not actually be far off a lap down by the time they both come out of the pits. Because it's about a 30 second time pit loss and having to stab down his teammate as well, plus driving a lap slower. 
with half a front wing as well. Alright, on to that for now. Back onto the live action. We're currently in a Toyota sandwich. We've got Kobe actually a few seconds behind us. We've got Lewis Hamilton now just nine tenths in front of us. So we're putting the pressure on now because like we've got more downforce on our car than that that Toyota. That Toyota is it's low drive, which gives it a straight line speed, but with us having more downforce, we can have a bit better tire laugh, at least around these high speed tracks anyway, which just seems my driving style better anyway. And seemingly Robbie Kubitz as well, because I'm pretty sure he's still leading the race, or at least in second place, still fighting with Alonso. Again, that's when they once again through Parabolic and just showing the more down for the car. Actually, faking out into the pit lane to try to play for Margie there with Lewis Hamilton. Now it's going to be side by side now with the 2008 champion Dan Nighton. Of course, we got DRS now because it is lap four now, lap five of the race. So we make the move now easily in front of that chase now. Get back up now into the podium places. And we're back at where we started our first ever race with Williams. And it's side by side now for the lead of the race. Well, we've got Robbie Kubica now going side by side with Alonso. Alonso going to try and go the long way around the outside now. Kerva Grande do the same moves that he tried on Seb Vettel in 2011. But Kubica is not going to force Alonso onto the grass like Vettel did to Alonso on that day. And now we're into the second chicane. Kubica is just about able to hold on to the lead now of the Grand Prix. We can just see behind how much me and Hamilton are now gaining because the more these two battle, the more time it's going to be costing themselves. And me and uh, Hamilton, we could just, we, if you wanted to, we could just sli slipstream train each other and use ourselves just as fellow Brits now just to try and work our way back up to the front. But already catching back up now to the two of them now. Alonso with the slipstream of DRS now once again. He's going to make him once again. He pulls to the inside now of Robbie Kimmins. Of course, Alonso is the defending race winner of this Grand Prix from last season. He won it pretty convincingly last year as well. He's going to want to do the double here. And then the Kibitz will have the solution now to try and come back now. Our Flandre Alonso use all that good BMW power that we have in this car. He's gaining now. He's going to try and move from the inside now into Power Bullock. He's thinking about it. He's close. He has a look. But now we're going to try and make move back on the inside line. We just had to back out of it though. We just not quite close enough on the inside there. Of Lewis Hamilton to try and make a move there. Oh, this line. Imagine how is going to be going for full hammer time now. Can you, can you see, see a sniff now of the lead? Alonso and Kubitz have lost themselves so much time now on this one lap alone. Now Hamilton now in the stadium as well. Of course, we, actually, without, he hasn't even got DRS. He's going so fast now into turn one. This Kubitz as well with DRS and into turn one now. We've got Alonso and Hamilton going so fast now. I mean, Kibisa, Hamilton, Alonso. When was the last time they were battling for a championship? I mean, back in 2008, 2009, wasn't it? I mean, these, these three legendary names, you, you never thought you'd see together once again. And this, the, the Italian Grand Prix, honestly, in this championship, always has been one of the best races of the season. But still now, it's Hamilton now over to second place. Alonso went from leading the race in half a lap. Now down to P3, now down to defend from us. Now he gets a pull run there out of the second chicane. Trying to look around the outside now for the last move, but we, we just no way around there. He can make a move. And Alonso just compromised himself, we're losing a lot of time now. Alonso again, a bit flustered. Imagine once he thought he'd get the lead of the race, imagine he thought he could pull away. Didn't see one of the uh, the pink cars coming into play along with all of the BMW Williams now as well. So BMW, Toyota and um, Mercedes AD as well. Just three brilliant names in the world of most sport as well. And I'll be front. Is that how to go for a move? It is. Hamilton is now just taking the lead of the Grumpy away from Kibisa. Goes to pour in there through Ascari as well. Hamilton forcing that wide. Hamilton, or he'll be the guy. We're going to be in a tank slap run as well. Now you've got Camille Kerbiashi now in the uh, Toyota now up behind us as well. Now we're getting in session now on the back. Of the Mercedes of Fernando Alonso, but now Kubica, he's not going to take that lying down. I've been his teammate now for long enough, and we've seen how much of a great driver he is, and honestly, he was before his, his terrible accident as well. But now then, now with DRS now, as Kubica has got answer now to come back now at Lewis Hamilton down the street, but we've got answer now for Fernando Alonso going side by side now with the championship leader and two time world champion as well. As, Alon as Alonso defends to the inside line, Hamilton defends to the inside as well. Synchronized possible overtakes here. From us, Williams Pay going to force that Alonso to get very good to their force him out onto the grass almost. So, people are showing that, that I'm coming through whether you like it or not. Now, Robert Kubica takes the lead of the Grand Prix once again back. And now then, through Kerr the Grand Prix, now we lose Hamilton now in the station now on the back of our teammate. Now, they're coming now into the second screen. He's going to try and go for a move on this line. Now, he plays it, plays it cautiously, uh, wait, waiting his time possibly. Now, that we get another kid running there out of the second chicane as well. We've, we've dropped Alonso a little bit already. So, Alonso really is just going to need to regroup now if he wants to uh, get back now into this into this fight for the the, uh, the lead. Although he's still right to be honest. So, honestly, with the amount of, how many lead changes has there been? I mean, us four have led the Grand Prix now. So, we've got that four leaders in seven laps. So, that's going to be some kind of, that's That's really great going. We're just showing how close this championship is, even on a track, high speed track like this, where the Toyotas are so fast in a straight line. And again, so is our Williams and that uh, Alonso just fast in whatever guy you give him, let's be honest about that. We get a great one there, there through, through his guy, so the high speed comments is Williams working so well, as he always has done really. 
in the high speed corners and now Hamilton now pushing inside now. Our team in Rubbish Bits and once again he's gonna be, uh, gonna be that's gonna be a ballsy move. He can pull it off on the inside line of Power Bullock and committing to try to hide it around the outside line. He just gets fossil though by Lewis Hamilton now. Lewis, Lewis Hamilton now retakes the lead now of the Grobe Kibita now with the station now. We're actually gonna go three wide almost, are we? No, looking behind actually here, here comes Alonso, so it looks like he's recovered himself now. And now he's also gonna be side by side now with one of us winning that actually which Williams is that? Is our key is that Kibita or is that our teammate now? So we're actually gonna go three wide further behind now, just about or the second place we just have to back out of that though. So now Williams now back down into P4. Got Alonso trying to go from P4 now up into P2. He's on the racing line now. He's got Lewis Hamilton now. We are around the outside line now for Kevin Grant. Hamilton's not going to get down left. Actually, he backs out of there. Not wanting to stick it out around the outside line. They're going to be getting in the station now on the back. Of Fernando Alonso now into the second shift. He's going to try and go around the outside line once again. Trying to pull the move that he's timid did earlier on in the race. He's going to be side by side with the two of them. Has he made the same this time? He's still side by side. Has he made the mistake? I can't quite tell you what No, still side by side now. Into the last Alonso got to hold it now around the outside line. He then turns to the racing line as well for the two that champion and championship leader. And then around the second last It's Hamilton on the inside line, but it's Alonso really with the racing line he gets forced out though by Lewis Hamilton which is going to slow Alonso down down this straight and we've got DRS as well Alonso doesn't actually have DRS he was behind in the detection point now they go now back into third place once again and into a cigar we're not quite close enough to make a move on the inside of Lewis Hamilton and down this next straight here we can get a good run here on that Toyota running out wide using all the track available to us like we used to do back before they put the grab trap there back in 2008 times back then and again now this is of course the, the, the ERF that will be to high as well because we got our battery power state, of course, the batteries I mean, from BMW's Formula E experience, they can use some good energy here, and we've got, we've got it all set up as well for one massive assault now to try and get past Lewis, Lewis Hamilton here down the straight. And once again, bring back a Williams 1 2. And the Grand Prix will be side by side now with Lewis Hamilton going to breeze past the Toyota pretty easily. You know that thing's fast. Actually, here comes Alonso as well. Alonso again, very opportunistic on the inside line. will be side by side now with the two of them now. And now Hamilton on the outside line, can he try and do anything now, can he get another corner, but it's Alonso with the racing line. Once again, Alonso can try and make some last half, and once again, Hamilton just uh, has to admit defeat now. Hamilton's now down to P4, so once he leads the race, he dropped down to P4. That seems to be how it goes. Now, once again, Alonso, good defensive to the inside line. Hamilton, once again, going to try the, the same move we did, but Alonso this time was wise that move, cuts across the nose there of the uh, Toyota, so good, good driving there from Alonso. And moving a bit further on from the lead battle, looking a bit further back here, we've got the... Uh, the Red Bull of Max Verstappen, who started in dead last place, and in front of him he's got one of the Renaults and then one of the uh, the Alfa Romeo Sabers as well. There could be a screen selection train here. The uh, the Red Bull is not fast in a straight line. The Renault seems to be pretty good, although Verstappen, he's giving us a chance to get on the inside line now into Parabolic and be side by side still. With the throw there is Jean Eric Verne as well, so this could get pretty personal between these two. With it's Verstappen that makes the move on the Renault. Now they can Vern try and come back now at Max Verstappen down the straight. He's going to be in the position as well. And well, we don't, we don't know what Verstappen could have done in qualifying because he never actually set a lap time. And then you've got Vern getting back now in the position. He's going to try and go to the inside line. Verstappen defence to the inside line. And Vern's going to try and sneak it around the outside line. Just about finds the gap. And then 3 turn 2 He's going to keep it on the inside line. But if Verstappen though, with the racing line, Verstappen there can try and put the power down. No, it's Janine Vern still keeping it out around the outside line. And Vern can still keep it in the side line now through Kerber Grande. Now it's going to be a drag race now down into this next chicane. It's going to be Verstappen on the outside line. Vern on the inside. Can Vern try and outbreak now Max Verstappen? And that's going to be a pretty hard task in itself as well. When Verstappen then forces his way on the inside line. But still, great driving there from Johnny Vernon. He's honestly revitalised in this Renault. He knew he was down in the dumps in the Ferrari. And even though he's in what is kind of a little bit of a worse car now, he seems to be just much happier in his demeanour as well. Now, what can the, uh, the Alfa Romeo do of uh, Giovinazzi? Can he try and stay in the points now ahead of Max Verstappen? And now then, on to uh, lap 10 now of the Grand Prix. We've got Lewis Hamilton behind us. So we've got a team that Robbie Kubica right in front of us. So now lap 10 is going to be struggling a little bit now on his tyres. That's why we're right up behind him. We've left Alonso and Hamilton now behind us for dead. And now it's actually a team that Kubica now coming into the pit lane, of course, because he's a bit sore. Was the uh, lead of the two drivers out of meaning? He gets his first call on what he wants to do. And he's pitting now. And he's actually got Alonso and Hamilton. They're still going at it now. They've been going at it now, honestly, for what? 12 years? Now they're going at it once again in this Italian Grand Prix as well. And now Kubica goes on to a set of medium tyres now. And these mediums, barring any disasters, definitely yeah, have not just jinxed it there, will take him to the end of the Grand Prix. And that's about where he drops out. He should still be in the top 10. There goes one of the Red Bulls. And that's probably Verstappen. I doubt it's Kvyat, since uh, Kvyat had to stop at the end of the first lap. So Verstappen, I think he got into the top 10. He's just battling with the Renault. So he's going to be Kvyat. He's still in the points places, at least, anyway. And now he can he's trying to use those medium tyres now. Game up to temperature. And I'm moving a few laps further on. I think it's about lap 13, lap 14 now. We left it a few laps further on, just stretching out the, uh, these uh, tyres here. Can try and go for an overcut on our teammate, because I'm hoping that Kibisa can try and get held up a little bit in the traffic behind him. We're going to set now of medium tyres as well. And these mediums, like Kibitzas, will take us to the end now of the race. We've got Hamilton in behind. He's actually going to have said soft tyres. Very interesting choice there from uh, Toyota to just 
Because the guy trying to do something different, because me and Kibitza, we were just running away with it now once we got past him and Alonso. Now then, now. Is, is this Robbie Kibitza? He's coming out now into turn one. We're, we're actually in front, though, of Robbie Kibitza. We've, like I said, we performed the overcut there to perfection. Kibitza must be held up with a bit of traffic. I mean, despite how easy it is to overtake here around the track, if you get held up through the corner, through the second sector and that, you can lose a, just lose a load of time still. Now, it is the last 13 of the race. We said a few fellas the last, and we've got Adrian Sutton now in the Ferrari, coming from us now in P2. I imagine how he's asked us for a glory run, really, because the Ferrari have not been anywhere really close to the podium consistently, honestly, throughout the season, let alone here at the home Grand Prix as well. And with three technically Italian teams on the grid as well, they're still highest up with them, so they've still got some pride in that, I guess. And now then, our tyres are on mediums, and not going to be able to tempt you yet. We've still got Robbie Kubica ready about it because he's going to his tyres now for about three laps or so, so his. Although they're a bit more worn than what ours will be, he's going to be up to tempt you now, he's gaining a season, of course, with DRS as well. That Williams is not to be messed with in terms of straight line speed. We've got three seconds We get Paul in there through a sky, pretty much just feeling the pressure of our team at Robbie Kubica now right there behind us. And then down the straight. Actually, I don't know if this straight has a name. We don't know if Kubica now pulls to the inside line of us now. On this straight now down into Parabolic and Kubica moves very aggressively. That's, that was a bit cheeky, Kubica. That could have ended in disaster. We can try hiding around the outside line. Because I'm not having Kubica going across in front of me like that now. So we're going to keep me side by side. I mean, uh, Kubica just has to uh, just get in front of me. We just have to tuck in behind Kubica. And now we're going to be the ones with DRS, are we? Yes, we are. And we get a good run now. Kubica gets to the inside line once again. And now we're going to make the move now in turn one. Oh, yeah, actually, Kubica backs out of that. I think he may have been told to let us back through, honestly, because that was a very cheeky move just to clear through us in Parabolica on the fastest corner on the track as well. So out of the corner there, he's let us back through. He's not he's not taking this line down though. Gonna be side by side still with our team working missing Kibis and through Kyle Corner makes the move now, passes once again and retakes the effective lead of the Grand Prix. Now we've got to take her in the outside of him now into the second chicane now from his camera shot. It's still Robbie Kibisa now that leads the Grand Prix Kibisa. I mean, he came third here on his third race in Formula 1 in a BMW Sauber, which was nowhere near a, uh, a podium contending car. So this track pretty much like Canada as well. It's just a track that works for works for our teammate, it seems. But now then, we have a second by DRS now once again on the back of Robbie Kibitza now. Can we try and make the move? Coming up now to the sky, Kibitza goes to the outside line. We're going to have the inside line now, try and make the move. We just breeze past the team once again. I mean, Kibitza are just slipstreaming each other. I mean, despite us battling like this, with us slipstreaming and making the moves before the corner, we're just going to be pulling away even more from the Toyota of Hamilton and the Alonso and the Merck behind as well. And now, has Kibitza got any answer to us now with a few laps on our tyres now? Our tyres now should be coming up now up to temperature. And the Kibitza though, he's still going to give it everything he's got. I mean, he led a fair chunk of this race, about the first seven or eight laps. Uh, total anyway, he, he was leading on lap 10, but the amount of lead changes we had in the first six, seven laps was honestly absolutely manic. Now then, down the straight now into turn one, and Kibitza, he's got DRS, but we are now pulling away though from the pole. So now, our tyres are now coming into the zone now, and our tyres are a bit fresher as well, so this is where the advantage lies now with us. And I'm moving quite a bit further on into the race now. Things have settled down quite a bit now after that start. We've got Robbie Kibitza now actually coming up to lap one of the Torosso Hondas. I mean, like I said, they wouldn't be far off a lap down after that lap one disaster for both of them. I don't know which one's in front though, I never actually looked at that, so let's see. Now hopefully this Torosso, I mean, I think the Torosso actually came here with points last year, so I mean, they've only got scored points once so far this season back at France, I think it was, with Pierre Gassi, so they've not had a great season as a works team, honestly. I'm sure many were thinking that they could have took the fight to at least the midfield. And again, that car was designed so late as well that it is a bit of a bodge job. And it gets easy out of the way though of Robbie Kibitza, so at least he doesn't affect our teammate. Then we've got Lewis Hamilton now, still in P3. He's in a bit of a world of his own now as well. He's dropped Fernando Alonso, Alonso so I'm saying he's not the fastest thing in the world, although he is still there right behind Alonso. I mean, you've seen he'll fight with tooth and nail in every single car he's given. And now they're on to lap 22, so yeah. About 10 laps further on from when we last saw us. We're now actually coming out to lap one of the McLarens. Now McLaren, remember, they had no issues at the start. It's, it's took 20 laps. This McLaren's legitimately going to be lapped. And then we've got, of course, we'll actually, no, we don't actually have DRS. We weren't quite now in the detection point. We're now getting out on the back of that McLaren, which now we should make a move to the inside line through a scurry to make it later through. Now trying to get around the outside line. Actually, McLaren, actually, the car has hit us off. The McLaren's now here. He's into gravel. Into the gravel. Okay, just about getting in now. We're spinning on the rest of the McLaren's facing the wrong way. And we're just about going to get onto the track. That's the McLaren for you, Harrianto. Harrianto, what the fuck was that? What were you doing on the inside line? Now he goes keep this into steamrolling past us now. We've lost the lead of the Grand Prix. We've lost half a front. We were sparking away now as well. Things are going to be dragging now on our car. God, we're going to have a lot of damage now. We got absolutely barged out of the way by Rio Harianto. What was he doing? We could try to hide it around the outside line of Parabolica. We somehow flooded around the outside line with half a front wing. The things you can do when you're annoyed at a driver from this being smashed out of the lead. 
It's like Montoya all over again when you asked to stab him back in 2001 in Brazil. Although, thankfully, online Montoya were actually able to continue the Grand Prix without us, but our team had Robbie Kubica right up behind us, has also brought the Toyota of Lewis Hamilton back into play, and Hamilton is on a softer compound of tyres, but I don't know if his tyres are going to be wearing out or what, and we're still just trailing sparks now. I mentioned Kubica is going to be uh, not wanting to follow directly behind us, in case our front wing just completely implodes like Spassi Vettel's at the real-life 2019 Bahrain Grand Prix. Well, then through the first game, we just the second game, just about it can would keep it there. I mean, now we've got a 3 0 fight now for the uh, the win of this race. Now through the Lesmos, we can't even keep it on the road. We're now dipping wheels into the gravel. Because literally, if you look at the left side of our front wing, there isn't actually any front wing there. We're just diving all the place once again. Kibitza almost was out on the back of us there. And you're just so lucky to actually get away with that. Now Kibitza now takes the lead of the Grand Prix. And I guess what he's going to track Lewis Hamilton with him. Can you know, just going to Hamilton's going for the lead of the race on the inside line. There'll be three lead changes in one straight. There is now Hamilton. He takes the lead of the Grand Prix. He's going for more, a comfortable Williams 1 2 to a Williams 2 3. I don't even know if my car's going to make it to the end of the Grand Prix at this point. Now you've got Ruby Kibitza. Kibitza, give it everything you've got because there's no way I'm going to win this race now. I've had a, uh, been absolutely shafted, literally, by Rio Harianto. Kibitza, you've got to give it everything you've got now. Use everything that BMW engine has to give you now down this straight. Come on, turn it up to 11. You're the only hope now to salvage something for Williams in this race. Now then, with the DRS, now he's getting you back now. On Lewis Hamilton, you've got so much speed. Come on, Kibitza, you're making now to the outside line. Hamilton defends to the inside line just about cuts off the nose of our teammate Kibitza. He's like, though, it doesn't mean Hamilton takes a compromise line through the first few corners. But he's on softer tyres, so it might even out for him down this straight. And we're still just trailing sparks now. And that honestly just has to have, that has to be things from dragging them on the bottom of our car. Uh, we're still not heavy on fuel or anything, so there's literally things on the are literally scraping on the floor. I'm just hoping I don't get a black flag now, black and orange flag for the, the dangerous car thing, because I, I do not want to pit. This is close to the end of the race. Stewards, please just just let me stay out. I hope anyway, because I that would just that would just sum up my race really. If I if I get a black and orange flag now, I have to come into the pits now, that means. If we do anyway. Although we still have DRS now on the back of our team, so we're still just about keeping it, but honestly, this DRS is what's keeping me here with Robbie Curious and then Hamilton out from that Klingon into a scenario. Curious abides his time, he doesn't go for the move there. Uh, that might be why he's committed, he's keeping on the back there with his Hamilton. So Hamilton's tyres now must be going off those, those soft tyres. It was a good gamble, it wouldn't have paid off, any, off in any other situation where Harry Hunter hadn't punted me off the road. That wouldn't have worked out for him. Now Kibitza to the inside line now, of Lewis Hamilton now, into Parabolic and trying to keep it on the inside line. Just about keys in those of Hamilton on the racing line, keys in there and around the outside line. And just about keys in front though of Robbie Kibitza, but Kibitza now is going to have the DRS now. Come on Kibitza, you've got to make this move now into turn one, pushing the inside line now. Of Lewis Hamilton going to be driving now with the two of them down into turn one. We're actually getting a double slash, you've got to make it three wide down now into turn one. Give me right there, that's a huge lock up though from Hamilton and Kibitza, both of them are going so late on the brakes. Hamilton's tyres must be about finished now at this point. That's where we're going now, side by side. With Hamilton, but Hamilton's just come out, got the race line, just about keys in, but now it's up to us now to annoy Lewis Hamilton as much as possible. So Robbie Kibitza can win this Grand Prix. As much as it pains me to say that, Kibitza is going to have to take it for the team now at this point. And into the session came as well. Hamilton there forces out, forces out wide, because now we, this is what we is exactly what we need. We need to keep Hamilton occupied. We need to keep Lewis Hamilton away. From our team here, Robbie Kibitza now, we've only got what? Two and a half laps now on the race left. Fernando Alonso is lurking in the wings behind us. I'm only he's been told that we've got many things in our car that are missing now. Probably he's all stood in the ground trap or probably attached to Harry Ento's car. Honestly, I can guarantee that's the closest that McLaren's going to get to leading to the leading car now at any point in this for a long time to come. Let's put it like that anyway. And then through a score, we've still got pass off from him there, still on the uh, the apex there. We're running out all the way, just running out all of that. Honestly, I'm glad. How do I even keep that on the track, quite honestly? As soon as you touch the cover, usually you spun out, but this thing, this thing's got so little downforce, I, I, I doubt it could spin out really. There's, there's so, many, so much imbalance really in this car that we are now going to stay with us now to the finish now of the race. We've got two laps of the race now left to go. And train actually now, Carmen Jordan is out of the Grand Prix. That's the wrong McLaren. I want Rio Harry Antonio out of this Grand Prix, but Jordan, Jordan really challenging the points anyway. I mean, I think she retired last race as well. Unless she, she's retired in turn one. That is not a place to be retired. Stewards, you need to remove that car. That is one of the overtake. Actually, no, you don't. Leave the car there because then that's one less place Hamilton could try and overtake Kibitza. The Kibitza, just floor it, mate. Give it everything you've got now just to pull away from Lewis Hamilton's Toyota. It's so fast in a straight line. 
It's just it's lacking a bit of downforce as well, just in general. That's why on most tracks it's usually not up there so much, really. But then, I mean, moving straight on to the end of that, a hard cut though to the end of the lap, of the lap now. So on to the final lap now. This is of the Grand Prix. I'm pretty sure now into turn one. How are we going to try and make a move? We just defends though to the inside line. And now then coming through the first and second chicane, we're going to have to stick behind here, Lewis Hamilton. But now then, once again, we're still going to have to annoy him. Still, still got there, Alonso in the background as well. Solo. Alonso is still not out of contention here. Anything can still happen as we've seen in Formula 1. Anything does happen and, well, you know how the saying goes. It, uh, it usually does. Now then, into turn one and then turn two through the second chicane. There we go. Okay, run, but Hamilton is still pretty close to a team. Give us a, give us a, just give it everything you've got. I know he pinned it before us as well, so his tyres are going to be going off as well, along with the uh, Toyotas of Lewis Hamilton's as well. And that Toyota is pretty good on its tyre wear as well, so. It might not all be plain sailing from here for Robbie Kibitza. Going up now then into Ascari and Hamilton is not close enough though, crucially though, to make a move there on the inside line. But now then, coming up now through the end of Ascari there, gets a, a good run, but Hamilton gets a bit even better run, it looks like as well. And then in the slashing as well, coming up now down the second last straight, Hamilton moves to the inside line of our teammate Robbie Kibitza coming up now into Paramount, going to be side by side, come on Kibitza, just flooring it around the outside line, Kibitza knows it, no he can't, trying to get for the switch back to the inside, we're now right down behind as well, get falls down to the grass there, we've got so much more overspeed as well now, coming up now to the finish line, Kibitza pulls to the inside line, but I think, I thought, actually, I don't know. Who's just won the race? I think Hamilton just about held that. I'm not sure, though. I don't know who won the race. Now, looking at that now, from our POV. And it's Kibitz now. He's up behind. This Hamilton now. I was going to all be about this run now. Onto the finish line. The checker flies coming up. Now, it's Kibitz. He's going to pull to the inside line. But there it is. And it is indeed. Fernando Alonso. The finishes in fourth behind us. But it's Lewis Hamilton to win the Grand Prix. And that's his second win in a row, I think. So, he's, getting, he's making quite the habit now of winning these races. Now you can see VJ and Malia and the Toyota boys looking very, very happy with that because that was a win, I'm sure, that they were not expecting to have under their belt come the end of this race. And they always, I mean, unsurprisingly, they're all celebrating that. They're all very happy with the win. And you've got to congratulate. It's a great drive from me. Alonso seems pretty annoyed there to be in P4, just not in the fight when it mattered most. And then Lewis Hamilton takes his third victory now of this 2018 season, and it also is his second victory in a row. But it's also Toyota's best combined result at Italy, with the previous best being first and safe in 2005. I mean, it was the best result anyway. Lewis Hamilton won the race, so that was already the best result. So, glad to see where, where Camille Kobayashi came, because I'm pretty sure he has to be in at least fifth place with the pace they were showing in this race. Taking a look at the end results for this race, and Hamilton would take the victory by less than a tenth of a second. From Robbie Kibir, so that's to be what the third season in a row, or third season. We've had a massively close finish here for the uh, the win at the Italian Grand Prix. And we thankfully at least come away with a podium. So damage limitation, I guess, but we had that race so in the bag with Alonso down in P4 and Kobe actually does come home in P5 with Vettel lead the Ferrari only in sixth place. So back to the drawing board for Ferrari for next season. With Verline in 7th place, Daniel Kvyat with a good recovery really up into 8th place with Adrian Suttle in 9th and Verstappen rounds out the top 10 with jean Eric Verne in 11th and Giovinazzi gets a point on the board for Salva Alfa Romeo in 12th. Both Hasses would just miss out on points, at least Schumacher would anyway in 13th place with Nigel Hockenberg in 14th and Charles Leclerc in 15th with Gasly in 16th as the uh, lead of the Tarossos and long straw down in P17. It's not been a good race there for the Canadian with Carlos Sainz a lap down and then Harry Anto. I want him disqualified from this race honestly. He needs a penalty for the next race. I'm, I'm going to have to go see the stewards about that one. And then Carmen Jordan, unfortunately the only retirement from the Grand Prix. So moving on now to the driver's points table and Alonso unsurprisingly still leads with 39 points now ahead of Lewis Hamilton now with his two race wins in a row. Gets up now into second place, joined on points with us, but uh, Hamilton's got one more win than I have, so he's up into second with me down in third. Then Kibitz is now up into fourth place once again. One point clear now of Seb Vettel, who's in fifth, and Daniel Kvyat now down in sixth. Max Stappen stays where he was in seventh place, only now one point ahead of Pascal Verlein. With Adrian Sutil in ninth, and Kirby Ashi now in 10th place with 47 points, so still quite some way behind Lewis Hamilton. We've got Charles Leclerc now down to 11th on 44, one point clear of Hulkenberg who runs off the top 12 with 43 points. Mick Schumacher drops down to 13th place 
with 41 points and is 4 points clear now of John Eric Van in the Renault in 14th and then Strolls in 15th on 33. Now has more than twice the points of Daniel Ricciardo. Then you've got Harry Anto in 17th ahead of Pierre Gasly with Massachusetts and Giovinazzi both on one point apiece leaving still only Carlos Sainz and Carl Jorda yet to score. Finally now moving on to the constructive standings and Mercedes still lead but they're now at only 17 points clear now of Williams so all things considered we still got a good points haul over the, over the Mercedes beating both of them in this race. Then we've got Red Bull in third and then now though only 22 points clear of Toyota. Toyota could be in within a shout possibly of sneaking into third place come the end of the season as they get ahead of the Scuderia at their home race whilst that's just removing more salt into the wound for the, uh, the Ferrari boys. Then we have Alfa Romeo Sauber in 6th place with 83. And then we have Haas in 7th on 74, 9 points behind. Renault in 8th on 66, still just about there in that fight for 6th place. And McLaren in 9th and Torosso propping up the standings in 10th. If you enjoyed this race, definitely leave a like on this video for the, what honestly has been one of the most eventful races there will probably ever be in this championship. I'm going to vote for your driver of the day with the poll link that will be in the video description as well. Also check out the wiki for this season and previous seasons as well for all the teams, all the drivers so if we keep up to date with the championship, maybe even the sneak peek of what's coming in the future as well, all the teams, all the drivers and that. Also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well. There will be linked down below in the description along with the, uh, the two, three livery mods I use. The uh, Martini Stripes on the Williams, the uh, BWT Toyota livery and the Alfa Romeo red livery as well. They'll be linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.